Student dorms at ARI are anything but fancy. The center runs on a shoestring, since most of the students cannot themselves pay the cost of their training. And since we put emphasis in inviting uh, people from the hardest, uh, uh, poorest uh, part of the world, so we always uh, have to find funds. And finding those funds has meant borrowing at an alarming rate. We have existed since the beginning by the grace of God and from day to day. Other organizations have come to us and said, well, do you know where your funding's coming from for next year? And we said, huh? <laughs> we don't know from day to day where it's coming from. And while this may have worked when we were small and growing, it's not adequate for the future. We need to be ready for the 21st century here. And we want our buildings, our facilities, our programs to be ready to go on. And the future is what ARI is building today through the work of its graduates. In Kenya, Peter Chandy is helping farmers grow coffee without the use of expensive and potentially destructive pesticides. What we are now trying in this coffee is uh, to try and use uh, natural pesticides, like herbs, for controlling some of those pests. Peter showed dramatic evidence of the difference in crop yield when organic farming techniques are used. These village women have banded together to grow trees for firewood. They've also become Peter's advanced change agents within their community. I called them for a seminar on organic farming and sustainable agriculture. Then uh, when they came home, they said that they didn't do anything. So I asked them, why didn't you do anything? They said that uh, their husbands could not accept the new ideas from them. Oh my. So what's the solution? They said, uh, you get our husbands. So some two weeks ago, the husbands came for a seminar. The response has been very good. Um, that lady says that uh, from here we are going to see what the husband has already done. So off we went to discover what kind of difference even two weeks can make. And this is the husband. This is the yeah. husband now. The man who's done it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Combining animal manure with silage already, this pioneer farmer is creating compost. This is a stick they use as a, temperature, as a thermometer for taking the temperature. This is the only way they would know whether their compost is going on well or not. When it's very hot, they can add some water. If it is cold, they know that it is ready. When it is decomposed like this, you put it in the farm, it is used or it's consumed by the plants immediately. Uh -huh. The father has also attended the seminar and uh, he has also done his uh, double digging bench for kitchen garden there. Double digging is a process of digging over the soil to a depth of two or three feet, which not only retains the moisture, it permits the roots to spread downwards thus enabling much closer planting on the surface. In this way, a fairly small plot of land, properly tended, can feed an entire family. Peter took us to visit Linus Niaga, a farmer who two years ago switched his farm over completely to the principles which Peter was trying to introduce. He has done, done the digging, and you can see it's quite deep, so the, um, there's a lot of water contained there, and that's why he's... Uh, his skills are quite uh, big. I never learned about bananas in ARI, but ARI's training, they trained us to make use of situation as it is. So I thank the ARI training because they have trained us to use the locally available resources. And that's what we are doing. To use your own brains and thinking about what the local community, what the local community can benefit. Two years ago, Linus was renting additional land in a desperate attempt to make ends meet. Now, his own plot not only feeds his family, he has produce and a cash crop to sell as well. The interesting thing in that coffee of his is that he has intercropped coffee with papayas, with sweet potatoes, and with uh, this, uh, this, uh, this grass for the animals. So he gets them all off the same He gets them all. With enough compost, he's able to harvest all of them together. Peter wasn't able to be part of the 20th anniversary harvest celebration back at Nishinasano, but we were there, and a great party it was. Oh, I think this is marvelous. Something that actually works, you know, and helping people to help themselves instead of just sending money and throwing it at problems. 
and in a world where everybody's talking about what is wrong and how dreadful things are, there's, you're part of the problem unless you're part of the solution. And I think this place is really working on fixing it. And it's exciting to see all these people together. Through this ministry here, you are impacting third world countries in ways that will impact the future in a positive direction. Uh, a lot of times what we contribute to is here today and gone tomorrow. At this place, what we contribute to will ripple out, and I think for generations. We are investing on the persons who would dedicate their whole life to sustain the life for the future. I think it's a wise investment and lasting investment on persons who would work as leaders for the people. To build a world that will still bear fruit tomorrow. The Asian Rural Institute needs your help, and take it from me, for every one person who graduates from the ARI experience, literally hundreds of others are helped to stand on their own two feet. It's the kind of development aid that really makes a difference. To build a world that will still bear fruit tomorrow, that's what we do when we support projects like this one through the Mission and Service Fund. If you'd like more information about the Asian Rural Institute, or if you'd like to comment on today's program, call us at 416-925-4850, extension 8288. Next week on Spirit Connection, some help with your personal prayer life. See you then. Connection is made possible through your gifts to the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church of Canada.